Hello and welcome to a new Godot tutorial. Today I would like to cover a really, really cool topic and I think uh, a lot of you guys will love it. So the topic for today is how to create a headless server or better said a lobby server for your Godot game. So with this uh, tutorial you will be able to create an, a kind of a decayed server for just lobby, for a lobby for example or for matching peers together with the inbuilt multiplayer with the inbuilt multiplayer stuff which Godot offers. So I think a lot of you guys will like it, maybe searching for that kind of video. So I hope I can give you some insights about the multiplayer feature and better said the headless server stuff on Godot because I experienced it my, for myself within the last weeks. Because for my current project I write a peer-to-peer -peer connection or I have write a peer-to-peer -peer connection and after I have seen that it's uh, not that easy because you need to match uh, different uh, clients together and if they are behind a router for example you can't get their public IP and then you don't have any peer-to-peer -peer connection possible without uh, yeah, special tactics or special tricks. I came up with the solution to just have a lobby server which is uh, connecting to the clients and which is routing all this stuff together. And for that I needed a dedicated server and so I came across the topic to headless server in Godot and yeah, I was interested in how to make it and so I experienced and learned a lot and I would like to share my actual knowledge about it and would like to show you how I did it for myself. It's not perfect yet and it's also not a complete tutorial overall where you can say okay you do it like that or do it like that. Um, it's more like I want to show you how I did it so far and it works quite well for me and for my game. Yeah and I also would like you to show you my actual project I'm working on so you can see maybe the yeah, the, the technology behind it or how it works in general. Before we start, what you need is the headless version of Godot. So you can find it on the godotengine.org slash download slash server. Here you have the headless version and the server version. What you want is the headless version because it's just a Linux 64-bit build which just uh, runs the environment but without all the GUI and audio stuff. What you want to have is the headless version because it's a runnable command line. It's runnable from the command line on a Linux server for example and you won't have all the GUI stuff. You just start your project. So just make sure to download it because we need it to start our server. So let us get into the Godot project. So this is my Godot project for the server. It is very very slim so <laughs> there aren't uh, very much files for now. Um, I have the server, which is just a scene in 2D, but it don't have any graphic at all because yeah, we just want to have a server. So it has a node and I attach the script to it. In the script I have the const for my server port and I have a const for my max players which are. Let us get into the multiplayer feature stuff from Godot. So what we want to do is if our node is ready, we need to connect the network peer connected and we need to connect the network peer disconnected. These are the both nodes which we get from the scene tree from Godot. It's a, a standard signal which is from the scene tree as set and we just connect to them and provide two functions for a client connection and for a client disconnection. Then we need to initialize the server which is from the network multiplayer enet which I use. This is for the remote procedure procedure calls. Um, yeah, you can check out the network multiplayer enet implementation for packet peer implementation using the enet library on the uh, documentation on Godot. So it's nothing new. Then I just say create a server on my defined port with my max players and afterwards the scene tree gets the network peer as the server. So these five lines of code is already everything we need to create a network server in Godot. This function is called every time a client connects to us, to our server, and every client has a unique ID, a unique network ID. 
Godot is handling that so we don't have to care about it because uh, they are unique and uh, all of them are working quite fine. So what I like to do or better said what you have to keep in mind is because we don't have any GUI or graphical interface on our server we need to make sure if we would like to uh, see some debugging or information that I use some print states for that so every time a client is connected I print just a client with ID is connected to server so then we have on our command line later on some print messages we can using for debugging or we can just see if we would like to have them but now comes the tricky part this is a very very special part for Godot on Godot with the multiplayer enet implementation we can do RPC calls which are remote procedure calls and what they does actually I can show you the file quite quickly so I have the remote client right here and yeah to have a remote call we need this function keyword remote Godot knows that this is a remote function and can be called with this RPC calls. A special thing and this is very very important a special thing in Godot is to do remote calls the server needs the same path to the scene as the client has and this one is very tricky and it costed me a lot of time to get that work and uh, that's why I want to <laughs> say that that's very important here so what I do is I have a scene with my remote client scene and I do an instance and afterwards I set the instance of this client I set the name to the ID of the client this step is quite important because the name of the nodes has to be the same on the server as on the client so the scene structure must be exactly the same Otherwise, you couldn't work with remote calls because if you are calling a remote call on the remote client GD and you do this on the client and the server don't know the path to this scene, then he couldn't execute the function. And that's the part which is uh, yeah, very important for that. But we will check it out in detail later. So I go just uh, over the function here and just uh, tell you a little bit about it. So we just uh, create an instance of our remote client scene then we set the name to our unique ID because I already said the ID for the network is unique and that means that the name will be unique as well because we set it for all our clients. Then I set the client ID which is for the network so it makes the node the owner to this ID and afterwards I have two signals which are for my game so these are just some customized signals for myself and of course I add this client to the scene tree because we need it afterwards in the scene tree um, I will show you that later on if we execute it and that's everything actually we do on our client connected function I also save my client in some kind of array here because then I have some kind of uh, assignment from ID to client object which I need later on and the other function is on client disconnected so it's the opposite from that I have a client which is disconnected I just save which client needs to be removed afterwards I remove the client out of my array I have saved before and I remove the client node from the scene tree that's everything I do here with these two functions and the ready function your server should already work in general because you have the possibility that network peers are able to connect and you have the possibility to disconnect the client peers I can already show you the server so I can uh, start the server right here because we don't have any scene it's of course blank and I have right below here my different prints I use so what I do is I just uh, look for the queue if there are some players queued um, what I can do now is to show you some connection started my game to show you the connection so it was connecting to server he said he is connected but we can of course check out our server right now and here we can see the client with this ID connected to the server and he has a unique ID so our server app is running fine 
If you're just testing it locally, of course you should uh, add the server IP to your local IP address. If you have a dedicated remote server, you should add your server IP. So that's everything actually to create a very, very basic uh, multiplayer connection. But of course I will show you how my client is working. I will show you how it works with the with the right node path. So um, let us start this again. So we have now our server where our client is connected. And if, if I click now here to the remote, we have our root node. Here's the root node. And here is our remote client node, which has the name of the ID of the client. And that's what I said before. And if I go to the client, I need to make sure that I have the same scene path as in the server. So we have also on our client the root path and then just below them I have the node with our client ID and it's also the same file as on the server. So let us uh, stop both applications right now. So and now we can go to the remote client GD script. This is the instance at node and we have it also on the client. This is the remote client GD script. And now I can use this file or this uh, scene to make actually my different remote calls. And so we can communicate with the server. Uh, what is very important is if you would like to call a remote call or before we go to in detail, I really, really advise you to uh, read about the high-level multiplayer API on Godot. You can find it on Tutorials, Networking, High-Level Multiplayer HTML. So it's just uh, getting all the basic stuff. And what I covered before is also mentioned here in, the, in this document. So it's a very cool document and you will get it working like that. And let us scroll down to the RPC calls. So remote procedure calls are what we need to communicate with our different peers. We have four different options. RPC is just called on every peer which is connected to our server. We just call it with the function name and we call it with the optional args. If we use RPC ID, we can use it on a specified peer ID. So if you would like to call it on one machine and not on all, you need to use RPC underscore ID. What is very important here is that the peer ID one is always the server. So if you would like to call a remote procedure call on a server, you can always specify the one as the peer ID and then it's called on the server. RPC underscore unreliable is for UDP and RPC is TCP. The differences between UDP and uh, TCP is mentioned up here and in general it's like TCP is much slower because it is a, a more high level protocol and UDP is just fire and forget. You should always use UDP. In my example, I also use TCP just for yeah, be better working for myself. I think I have to switch to UDP. I haven't checked it out now because as I said, it's really, really basic what I did for now and I'm just experimenting a little bit uh, with all the multiplayer stuff. So yeah. I have read through some pages and all of them advising to use just UDP. Yeah, and then also you can uh, with RSET or RSET unreliable, you can also manipulate or modify member variables X directly. You should actually read through this document and you will get all the stuff we have. So let us go back to our client. What I have now is I have two, I have my client with the remote client GD and I have the server with the remote client GD. In this script, I am able to do all the RPC calls. So what I have is uh, I have a search game function. I can just show you it. So I will show you a simple function on my game. What I have is I have a locker room right here and I can search a game. So what everything it does is uh, connects to the server and matches me with another player and hopefully find an opponent for me and then the game can be start. So I click here on the start button and everything the start button is doing in this moment is calling this function search game and the search game function is doing an RPC call to our server on E1. As I said, the one is the server and he is calling the enter queue function with the option. So we can go to our server and there we see 
the remote func enter queue and this one is called and this is doing in signal for enter queue I just move it right here and it's uh, just emitting the enter queue signal with these clients so everything I do here is that I showed you before I have the enter queue connected uh, and this is just on client want to enter the queue and uh, there I'm just checking if the option is unranked and then I add it to the unranked games and then I have just my queue which is queuing over them so you could see it right here so you can see right here I he's searching for a game and now on our server we have one player in the queue because we are already in a queue and now we are looking for another player. So I would need another player to actually start the game. But on this way I have a lobby server which is just having a connection of our player and we can search a game and having up a queue. So this is the state actually I am, yeah that's the state how far I am on my multiplayer game for example. And I hope you could already learn something. If you have questions please drop them below if you would like to see <laughs> an extended version or another version of this implementation if I have uh, done more progress um, you're welcome I will do a video for that please let me know if you would like to see it afterwards also if you would like to check out my game I'm searching for testers so I will drop the I will drop the URL in the video description if you would like to test the game it will be a shuffleboard game um, with cats in my flat fat cat franchise with multiplayer options so I think it will be very very cool and I will learn a lot from it and I, I hope everything with the server structure is working like intended or how I would like to have it but we will see when I make more progress I hope you liked the video please subscribe and upvote the video if you like if you would like to see more please comment below I always answer all the questions and yeah I hope to see you within my next videos I try to do a lot this year I'm full of motivation for making more Goda tutorials and share them with you so see you within the next video bye